In this video, we will be outlining the updated brewing guide for the Flare 58 series, as well as introducing the most recent features and improvements. The 58 and 58X now ship with the same brew head, and the preheat controller plugs directly into the back with the new streamlined cable management. This means you can leave behind the electronics and go camping with your 58, or easily upgrade your electric-enabled 58X down the road. All frames now have a magnetic disc mounted in the post for compatibility with our magnetic shot mirror. The new valve plunger has a large opening which improves function and adds the option to fill with the lever up and the stem installed. It also has just one slot now for a more secure stem and plunger fit. All 58 and 58X ship with the following. Additionally, the 58 ships with these. And all of what you see here can be purchased separately from our website. Links found in the description below. To get started, bolt the press stand together and install the brew head, rotating counterclockwise until you feel it click into place. Turn the screw just until it fills finger tight. Next, install the stem by tilting it to slide one tab under the rim, then drop the other tab into the slot. Rotate so that the gauge is positioned to the left. Now drop the hook onto the crossbar, slide the latch into place, and press the pin through the matching holes. If you're brewing with electronics, power on the preheat controller with a long press. Short press one more to set to medium, and again to set to high. To power the controller back off, press for two seconds. For this brew, we'll set it to medium. Leave the lever up and lock in the portafilter and puck screen during an electronic preheat. If preheating without electronics, fill the chamber with hot water and let it soak for about two minutes before purging. Consider repeating the step at least once more before brewing. Distribute your coffee grounds evenly through the basket, ideally with the Weiss distribution technique demonstrated here. Settle your grounds with a few gentle taps, then tamp by pressing down until solid resistance is felt. Place the puck screen on top of the bed of coffee. Lower the lever and lock the portafilter in firmly at four o'clock. Here we will use the valve fill method, filling the chamber all the way to the rim. Slowly lift the lever, pausing momentarily as you open the valve, watching for the water line to dip, then continue on. After topping off, begin the extraction by lowering the lever, forcing water to flow through the bed of coffee. We should be met with resistance and pressure building as we see the bottom of the basket filling in. We suggest starting with a slow ramp to your intended peak pressure. As you begin to approach your desired time and yield, start easing off the lever. Once there, raise the lever to stop the flow. Then swap in a second cup and lower the lever all the way to purge the unused water. Repeat as necessary until it starts to foam underneath. Both models ship with a low flow basket installed in the portafilter and we recommend you start with it before swapping out for a high flow basket. If you notice coffee spilling out over the rim or left untamped on the sides, use a couple of gentle taps on the counter to settle the grounds first or lower your dose. If the lever rises while locking in, lower the dose to prevent damaging your puck screen. If the lever assembly shifts when locking in the portafilter, keep the handle centered with one hand and with the other, tighten down the mounting screws as needed to restrict movement. If you're filling with the valve method and pulling to no more than 45 grams, you can skip the top off and lift only until the last of the fill drains through the valve. Thanks to the redesigned plunger, you can also fill the chamber while the lever is raised and the stem is installed. If you're finding it difficult to get the remaining water to drain through, try wiggling the lever a little to break up the surface tension preventing it. We do not recommend either model to be used with the hook unlatched. If the hook was to slip off the crossbar at the start of the press, it could strike the rim of the brewer, potentially damaging the hook and the cylinder. Pay close attention to the position of the latch and ensure it is slotted correctly on both sides of the hook. If water is coming out from the underside of the brew head, stop pressing and rotate the portafilter handle to the four o'clock position. If water is coming from the threads of the stem, tighten the gauge until it ceases, and if needed, swap in the spare O-ring that the unit shipped with. Deep cleaning the 58 is not needed more than every couple of months. To do so, disassemble the hook, lift the stem wiggling as you go to pull the plunger out smoothly. If you have a thin and flat implement without sharp edges, use it to pry out the O-rings. Otherwise, press out the O-rings by hand. Water, a nylon brush, and a washcloth are all you should ever need to clean all parts and internals. If the O-rings need lubrication, we suggest Molly Coat 111. Make sure to loosen the set screw sufficiently when removing the brew head and ensure that the entire brew head, not just the sleeve, is rotating. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out a different model, click on its brew guide now.